Let's take a look at some work solutions to some questions from the practice checkpoint from the trigonometry module. Let's start off with question 1c. If theta is equal to 23 degrees and alpha is equal to 51 degrees, determine the value of sine squared theta. Now, when you are squaring a trig ratio, you are squaring the value of the sine of theta, which in this case is the sine of 23, and you are squaring that value. So you need to type it into your calculator as the sine of 23 and then square that answer. And in this case, it gives you 0, 0,15. Where you need to be careful with this question is if you punch into your calculator sine, and then your calculator will put the bracket, and you type 23 squared, your calculator will square the 23 and not square the ratio. So you either need to put it all into a bracket and square it, or if you are working with a Casio calculator, if you punch in sine of 23, close the bracket and then put the squared in, it will square the ratio sine of 23. So you just need to be careful how you input it into your calculator. Question 5. If cos alpha is equal to 3 over 5 and alpha is between 0 and 90 degrees, determine the value of 2 tan alpha minus 1 without using a calculator. So that is very, very important. That Whenever you see that instruction, it doesn't mean that you need to put your calculator away, but it means that you have to show all your working and you can't use your calculator to do something that you wouldn't be able to do yourself. So, for instance, in this case, you may not do the cos or the shift cos of 3 over 5 to determine the value of alpha. You wouldn't be able to do that without a calculator. And because we can't use a calculator here, you may not do that in order to find the value of alpha. So we need another way of thinking about this. And if alpha is an angle between 0 and 90, it means that it can, will lie within a right angle triangle. So if we have a right angle triangle and we label one of the angles alpha, doesn't matter which one you label alpha, remember that cos is the ratio of, of adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent side is this side, so that will be 3 and hypotenuse will be 5. If you now want to find the opposite, because if you need to use tan alpha, we know that tan is opposite over adjacent, so we need to know the length of the opposite side. So we would say that x squared is equal to 5 squared, because 5 is the hypotenuse, it's always the longer side in a right angle triangle, so we need to minus the 3 squared, and that is because of the theorem of Pythagoras. That gives us x squared to be 25 minus 9, which is 16. And if we square root both sides, we get x to be 4. So now that we know that this side is 4 units long, we can now work out the value of 2 tan alpha minus 1. 2 tan alpha will be 2 times the tan of alpha, which is opposite over adjacent, minus 1. That gives you 8 over 3 minus 1 which is 8 over 3 minus 3 over 3, and your final answer is 5 over 3. And then finally, question 6. From the top of a tower, the angle of depression to a point on the ground 150 meters from the base of the tower is 23 degrees. The first step is to draw a diagram to represent this. So whenever we're talking about a tower in the ground, we know that the ground represents the horizontal and the tower will be on the vertical. And we know that the ground and the tower will make a 90 degree angle with each other. We now have a point on the ground that is 150 meters away from the base of the tower. And we are told that the angle of depression is 23 degrees. So the first thing we need is a line of sight to our point on the ground. And then for an angle of depression, it's always the angle between the horizon and the line of sight. So that angle there will be the 23 degrees. The horizontal and the ground will be parallel. So if we use alternate angles, we can see that this angle here is 23 degrees because there is my Z shape over there, my alternate angle. Okay. We are now in a position to determine the height of the tower. Let's the height of the tower there will be X. 
So x is the opposite side, and we have been given the adjacent side. Opposite and adjacent is the tan of 23 degrees. So that will be the opposite side, which is x, over 150. Multiply both sides by 150. So it will be 150 tan 23 degrees is equal to x. And if we punch that into our calculator, we get 63,67 degrees.